My name is Sarah Passero, and I'm here with AIS Media EVP Denise Malling, who will be presenting this exciting webinar titled The Science Behind Keyword Selection. We love receiving your feedback, so we'll ask you to complete a quick survey at the end of our presentation. If you're on Twitter, you can join the conversation using the hashtag AISmediaEDU. Anyone who tweets us will get a special mention. Finally, we'll be wrapping up with a special offer for our webinar attendees. For those of you just becoming familiar with AIS Media, we're headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and specialized in performance-driven digital marketing for high-growth companies. If you're in the Atlanta area, you're always welcome to visit our office. We focus on providing digital marketing performance amplified. What that means is attracting, engaging, and ultimately converting. Our capabilities include digital marketing strategy, user experience design, lead generation, and online sales programs, digital marketing including SEO, PPC, email, and conversion rate optimization. Our work has been recognized, garnered dozens of awards, including Best in Class Interactive Media Award for Responsive Web Design. Our insights and methodologies, such as what we're about to share with you today, have been featured on the press and news, including CNBC, Forbes, The Today Show, and many others. We've worked with hundreds of clients, ranging from leading companies, top brands, to Fortune 500 corporations. We're also grateful that many attend our webinars. And with that, here's your presenter, Denise Malley. Well, good morning, everyone. So today, we're going to talk about keyword selection. And we're going to start first with the journey. So what, how do people buy, and what is the impact of what we do out there in the main channels? And so if you look at this, this graph in front of you, what you see is direct is 65%. So this is an average of all different types of clients. So whether it's going to be large, small, medium-sized businesses, whether it's going to be in shopping, uh, business, computers, technology, this is an average. So it will change based on the size of your company as well as what products and services you offer. But direct means your website. So the website has 65% weight of the conversion. So in other words, it's going to be the final destination or pretty close to the final destination before someone buys from you or contacts you. The second to that is organic search. And organic search at 55% is pretty significant. Second after that is paid search. So as you can see, we want to focus on organic search but everything you learn today can also be used for paid search as well. So whether it's paid search in Facebook or social or it's Google AdWords, Bing, Yahoo, et cetera. So starting there, um, let's, get, let's move to our next section, which is our five elements to keyword selection. So these are the five things we're actually going to cover today and make sure that you have a good understanding of how you would go about this either for yourself or your client, whoever you're, you're working with. We'll go with competitive intelligence. We'll look at high volume keywords, what that means to the business, the relevancy of the keywords, intent, which is commercial intent. It means that that word is closer to the buying section of that journey. And then actual selection. So we'll give you some examples of um, the types of companies we work with. There are three common mistakes to avoid. When it comes to keyword selection, you want to be careful that you don't use single word terms unless, for some reason, they are very specific. Uh, and I'm not really sure in, a, in one single term how you can get there. If we have an example, we'll, we'll talk through it. Terms that are too broad or not focused on what you offer will cause a high bounce rate, and Google will penalize you for a high bounce rate. Google still dominates. Uh, organic search. So we will refer to Google more so than Yahoo or Bing. Yahoo and Bing will follow suit. So if you're doing really well in Google, you're sure to do well in Yahoo and Bing as well. And then terms that are industry specific. Uh, they're industry specific if they're of high intent, that's great. But if they're industry specific that you understand them or it's jargon or a term for us is SEO, SEM, what does that mean? 
A lot of people don't know what that means, so we have to spell it out and make sure that we're found under those terms because that's what they're searching for, meaning search engine optimization versus SEO or search engine marketing versus SEO. So typically what we'll see is we'll see existing keywords. And we have a tool we're going to share with you today at the end of our webinar where we can do some competitive intel and share with you. We don't typically offer it, so it is a special offer today so that by year end you can have this information and really hit the ground running in January. So typically we'll see existing keywords, and then we'll see what the potential is. And we'll talk through that today. How do we get to the potential? Because that's where all the good stuff is. If you could just write down what your goal is, a lot of people think traffic is a goal, and that's great. If it is increasing traffic, then today we're going to focus on what type of traffic, because traffic in itself doesn't necessarily gain you sales or leads. If it is to drive brand awareness, what does that mean and where are you driving them? And so if you want brand awareness as your goal, how will you measure that? It's really important that you think about how you're going to measure that. Brand awareness could be that you're found under your branded key terms, uh, which is great. You may have to, especially if you have more of a generic name for your business. And then obviously to generate leads or actual sales. So if you're in e-commerce, how are you working through that journey from where they came? And if you look back at, uh, we will post this webinar, but if you look back at the weight of conversion, it's important that you see where you're making that impact. And it may be that they come through social, then they come through organic, then they come through paid before they actually buy. But at the end of the day, is it to generate leads? If so, how many leads? How far apart are we? Uh, what's our conversion rate? And then if it's to generate sales, it's the same question. So let's look at key search behavior. The fact is that 89.82% of people click links on the first page of search results. So you can see that we have Atlanta Staircase as a key word and who's located at the top in the number one position um, below the mapping. In organic search, it is said that 33% of all clicks for visitors or searchers, if you will, click on the first link of organic. Paid, it's less, even though it's the first link, but they do click more likely on the top three than they do on the side, which if you're, if you're doing some paid advertising, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about on the right here. But if 33% are going to click on the first link, then you really need to be in the top three positions. And so if you're going to fight for those positions, they need to be worthy of actually fighting for it because it's not easy to get to positions one through three. So let's look at competitive intel. So first, identify your top three competitors. So I had mentioned at the end of this webinar, we're happy to do some competitive research using a um, patented uh, platform, enterprise-level platform. And you want to send us your top three competitors. And it's interesting what you'll find um, is that they may not be really competitors. They may be distractors. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So here's what you look for to find a competitor keywords that the competitor is ranking for and that you don't. So when we, if you choose to get the analysis, we'll give you keywords that the competitors are ranking for and that you don't, so you know which you want to rank for or not, and that you rank for and they don't, and then the volume of branded key terms so that you know that your brand is dominating page one. There's a lot of situations, however, where your, the name of your company may be generic, so you may not dominate page one. So you have to come up with some pretty creative ways of making sure you are because when someone types it in, they're going to now be distracted and they may type in a longer term that leads them directly to your competitors. So when we look at site comparisons for competitive intel, those are the three top things we're looking for. So I'm going to share with you this site. So this site, uh, if we look and we say, okay, Deck South happens to be a competitor. What we see immediately is that if you look at the page 
a lot of traffic is being driven to their home page. And then if you look at the search volume, you can see that the, the volume is fairly low. But if you look at the left and you look at the keyword, first one, blended rank means that they have the number one position of blended rank includes videos, maps, images, uh, you know, your organic listing. They have a blended rank of one. It does not include the AdWords, by the way. So patio, porch, and deck contractors. Only 10 searches. Is that something we want to chase? If I'm a patio, porch, and deck contractor, is that a good one for me to have? Probably. But let's look at some of the others. So you have outdoor stone columns. I don't know if that's high intent or highly relevant, but it must be relevant to them because they have a whole page dedicated to this term. So the point here is when you get this competitive intel, you want to look at, well, are they sending them to the home page? That's kind of weak. Uh, what's the search volume? Is it worthy of chasing? Because por patio, porch, and deck contractors in the Atlanta area, to have position one is really good. To drive it to your home page is unusual. So when you're looking at competitive intelligence, you don't want to just go for it because you think that's the way it should be. If we look here at the next site, we see Georgia Outdoor Lighting position four, but what do we notice immediately is the pages. It's all going to the home page. So you can see that most of their positions are on page two, three, four, five. They really need to move to position one. The only way they're going to do that is if they have a page dedicated to it. So when you are looking at your competitors, the takeaway is use common sense. Don't chase. Don't just because you think the competitor is coming up at the top of the engine doesn't mean anything really unless you know what the search volume is, where they're landing, if it's relevant and high intent. And I want to also note that when you search, behavior comes into play. So if you're searching in a certain area, your search behavior comes into play and GPS comes into play. So you may not be seeing what the rest of the world is seeing. So that's why doing that competitive intel and breakdown is so important prior to selecting the keywords. So let's look at high volume. Because everybody wants a lot of volume, except when you're chasing something that's not going to amount to anything. We need to choose the battle, so to speak. So here's identify voluminous keywords. So here's a construction company that has high volume keywords that they are ranked for. And construction companies, they are number two, which is fantastic. There's 6,600 except it's not geo-targeted, and it could be anybody in anything, which is fine just as long as they don't bounce. So this is a good position to be in as long as we don't have a high bounce rate and that it is relevant to what we're selling. So civil construction, number 12, needs to move to first page, only 880 searches, but really good searches, right, because that's high intent, because that's specific. So we need to move on to the first page. Industrial construction, excellent, 390, but we're at position five. So we're within striking distance now of position one through three. So we're going to really push hard for that one because that's specific too. PLC construction, same situation. Low search volume, but position one, it's great, especially for a national company. So high volume is not necessarily the 6,600. It's what makes up the rest of these words that you get to the high volume. So don't be dazzled by just a generic keyword that you can get position one on and have a lot of search volume because where you may end up is then you have a, a high bounce rate and that bounce rate is going to mess with you. And the other thing is you want leads that are as qualified as possible. You want people to come to your site as qualified as possible. However, you cannot qualify the entire Internet. If we had the key to that, we'd be doing it for sure, right? I'm sure all of you would. So let's look at 
our next, our takeaway. So getting to position one with less volume creates an easier opportunity to get there. Not only an easier opportunity, because it may not be as competitive, but a better lead. So spending your time on high volume, but relevant and intentional keywords. Let's talk about the next, the relevancy. So relevancy is really important because as of right now, you have to have 500 words per page. Each page on the website has to have one keyword associated and you can have a variance of that keyword. So those are just some rules by Google. The second, the most important actually really, is that your entire site revolves around one keyword or phrase. So the site has to be written, developed, formatted specifically for relevancy. And then you do all the tactics to make it happen. So if the site isn't set up correctly, it might be an idea for you to just have a website performance analysis done so you can get that site set up correctly for the coming year and then move on to really digging in. So relevancy is all about keeping the goal in mind. It isn't about busy. It isn't about how many people visit the website. It's about the type of people that visit the website, low bounce rates and high conversions. So driving traffic is one thing, but engaging and converting cannot be left out. And it'll feel good when you get a lot of visitors. It really will. And you see the, the, you know, the graphs are going up with trend and you're feeling great about the fact that you've got higher volume of visitors. What's really going to hurt, though, is a high bounce rate or that those visitors don't do anything, that they only visit one, two pages, or they only stay for a minute on the website. So relevancy is going to be extremely important. So you want to look for, right now, if you were to go do your own analysis on your website, do you have content on your website that speaks to the keyword? So on per page, do you have one keyword that's dominating that page? You can't keyword stuff, but you should have 500 words, and it should be in there 10 times. So if you think about that, it's 20% or 2% of the words. Yeah, 2%. And then if you were a potential customer, would this keyword be worth writing content for? Because content is hard to come up with. So if we're writing, is this going to get us closer to our goal, or are we just writing to feel good and get traffic? and share and post. Everything you do at this point should be, you should be thinking about the conversion. What does the customer need to have in front of them so they can convert? So it isn't just about keywords, it isn't just about volume, it's about relevancy as well. And so is your keyword industry or service related? And sometimes that can be good, but if it's like PLP, PLC construction, if it's an industry term like that, and there is a high search volume, which we saw there wasn't a high search volume, but it is highly intentional, would your customer know to type that in? And if they know to type that in, then that's great. And if you're not sure if they know to type that in, there are some things that you can do in platforms to determine what words they are using. So when choosing relevant keywords, choose the keywords that are relevant to your product, services, and content. And go look at your content. In the next couple of weeks, if you're really going to kick something off in 2016 or you want to reevaluate, go look at your content and read it and highlight or look for the key word. You can easily do that by copying and pasting in Word and then going to edit to find all the keywords that are in that page or on that page. Keywords must accurately describe your content. So uh, where most of us are skimmers, so if you have an e-commerce site, you have pictures, right? pictures of a product, which is great. It makes it easier because I can very quickly understand whether I want that pink backpack, right? So if I, I search pink backpack and a pink backpack comes up, that's great. It's relevant. It's a little bit harder in business to consumer where it's not a specific product, but it's a service and in business to business. So skimming the website uh, they may leave because they don't find what they're looking for. So you're, it's called H1, your headline. And your subheadlines should be very descriptive. So if I read the headline, I read the subheadline, and I read a couple of um, bullet or bold words, the story should be told based on that keyword. We're getting very deep here. So I'm going to pull back and just say, go look at your content, figure out which keyword or variants of that keyword you want on that page, and start doing a gap analysis. What do we need to create? How good is this? and then 
see how good the keyword is for your business. So here are relevant keywords. So we've got relevant keywords for uh, Southern Staircase. They've got pages associated with each of the keywords. They are general. They are also national. Um, we will say that because of who they are in their, in their industry, that curved staircase is extremely important that it's on page one in staircase manufacturers and custom staircases. And there's certain words that they have found that convert at a one in three. So they may not be high volume, but they're exceptional when it comes to intent. So again, it's not just volume. There's relevancy, right? And then there's intent. So looking at what the search volume is, figuring out what page is it optimized for that particular word or phrase, and going from there. You can also take these relevant keywords if you're local then we start to geo-modify or we focus on working within a specific search engine. So you can work within Atlanta, right, Dallas, any, it, there's a bunch of them. Roanoke, Virginia just got on board, Tallahassee. So you can literally get right down to your local search engine. So if you're a local business, these keywords are national. When you start to get very locally focused, you're going to have a better time of it. It does take a little bit of a different discipline. So when you are thinking about this, you don't you want to go with the search engine, not with the modified term, because people may not type in like Atlanta, they type in A L T A N T A by accident, you're not going to show up. So you want to go with local search engines when it comes to local. This happens to be a national company, they're highly relevant, they're all within striking distance of position one, which is good. Now they need to move up to position one, two, and three. So I just mentioned this, geo-modify and add localization. Adding the localization is better than geo-modifying, but if you are going to geo-modify, then you typically will do it when you have multiple locations in areas that they may not have an exclusive search engine. Here in Atlanta, uh, we have Atlanta, we have Marietta, but we don't have Stone Mountain. So we have to geo-modify those terms. So if you have questions about geo-modifying and what might be right for you, contact us. We're happy to give you some advice. So intent. I'm not going to say this is the most important. I'm going to say this is the one that's going to bring it home for you. Uh, so when you are building customer personas, if you haven't done that, you can do it. If you really know who your target market is and it feels like it's going to be too long to build those personas, then I would recommend that you use best judgment. So um, building customer personas, you can outline demographics, the lifestyle, the needs, speak to that need, uh, technology involvement, how likely are they to purchase or generate a lead online, what are your goals and challenges? And then you can get really deep with personas. We like to stay as top level as possible um, because then you can write in a, in a more efficient manner than reading a whole page and then writing something because writing is difficult. B2B MA personas. So this is business to business, marketing automation personas. So here's what a persona might look like. So we've got the CIO, they're a skeptic, responsible for budget and support, New platform equals headaches, needs to safeguard team. So you, they may not be willing to buy. They may be the gatekeeper. So they may not be able to say yes, but they can say no. Then we have the CMO. And they're loud and clear. So they're branding and supporting sales, and they need compliance and consistency. And so their interest level is low on the technology side, uh, but they want to control it. They want to know who's coming in, who's, how are we generating leads, and then they're going to be more about the brand and making sure that you represent. Then you have the VP of sales. Let's do this. So they've got 200 team, member team and they need to get leads. And we don't need a lot of downtime. We can't have failure, which CIO is also a skeptic. So they're going to be more of drivers pushing things forward. So when you know that, you want to make sure that you write for that. So in a B2B situation, you will have to write more content. Bottom line, you'll have to write more content. If you're B2C and you're selling a service, 
you're going to need to write content, maybe not as much as the B2B because they're going to absorb white papers and articles and so on and so forth, whereas services, they're going to probably look at pricing. It's going to come into play as well. B2B, the pricing usually isn't on the website. We like to hide it. Uh, and then in a B2C e-commerce situation, you've got to show them everything very quickly and be very specific. And that's going to come based on the categories that you have. So if you haven't done personas, but you know who your demographic is, you know what they're searching for, you're ahead of the game. You can put personas off. Did I just say that? What is your target audience searching? And searching is behind the science behind keyword selection. We apologize for that. Answer the following questions. Do we show how we're different? Is trust an issue with our service? And what are customers trying to accomplish? <clears throat> Showing how you're different, uh, you know, really getting them to just stay on your website is probably one of the best things you can do because then they're not distracted. So you have more of a chance of showing how you're different because they're exploring. Is trust an issue with your service? If trust is an issue with your service, then some of the things you need to look up are keywords that include rip-off, scam, fraud, you've reviews, you've got to see where are you coming up there. And has somebody just gone and written whatever the heck they want in Yelp, completely anonymous, how do you deal with that? That's also something that you have to look at because the intent is to compare you and that's pretty far down the journey. And then what are they trying to accomplish? What problem are you solving? So avoid friction. You want to guide them to easily navigate where they want to go. So this is all about keywords and making sure that when we focus and put all that effort into that one page with at least 500 words with our one keyword on our website, that they get what they're looking for and that they're easily navigating to the things we want them to navigate to, but that they land and stick. That's your number one goal. So here are high intent keywords. So all position one, all very specific, most very low search volume. But if we look, men's cross body bag, only 90 people are searching for it every month, but that's high intent. I mean, that's pretty specific. Two-tone shoes, chuka rain boots. I mean, these are getting very specific. Combat boots, men. So we've got to have an image because this is e-commerce, right? Uh, we've, maybe we have videos or what have you, but once we go to the website, we're going to land. We need to land on that page, on that product, with images. Now we need to see how long they stay, because if they leave right away, we're doing something wrong. So this is high intent keywords. This is a lot of keywords for this particular um, website. So you're going to get plenty of volume when you drill down and you get specific on your product. Now this is e-commerce. So for those of you who have e-commerce, you're gonna have thousands of keywords that you wanna be found under because you may have 100 products, you may have 200 products. Each, you're gonna have at least five keywords per. So you may have tens of thousands of keywords. The point is just making sure that when you do keyword selection, that you know what you're going to get and that you're fighting for the right type of keyword that's gonna turn into a conversion. So will this person buy based on this keyword? Will they buy based on just finding curved staircase? Uh, we would say probably not. Curved staircase manufacturer, custom curved staircase, yes. So even though some of these seem general, they're really not. There are three words. They're very specific. They may have low search volume in some cases, but they're very specific because the person knows what they're looking for. Make sure they land where they need to land and make sure you constantly ask yourself, will this person buy based on this keyword? Never mind your competition. Competitive intel, very important. Don't just chase them, however. You always want to verify where are they landing? What's the relevancy? You will never know their bounce rate. You probably won't know their sales. So you've got to use some best judgment, if you will, when it comes to choosing those keywords from competitive intel. 
And you've got to look at the volume. Is the volume worth fighting for? Well, look, if there's only 10 searches per month, that's 120 per year, but that conversion is 10%. Well, that's 12 sales or leads. I think it might be worth it. It's up to you to decide. And then you get into intent. And the intent is really where you take it home to conversion. So let's go to actual keyword selection. So competitor keywords, more specific, less broad, highly relevant and intense. We just talked about that. Let's look at the list. So this is a, a mishmash list, if you will. So this is another construction company. And look at all the blended ranks, page one, position one. That's great. Look at the search volume. Some of it is really good. The best one is the one at 3,600 where it says construction company and it lands on turnerconstruction.com, which is a very large construction company. It's the strange medical equipment planning companies. Is that really what they do? Construction companies, Indianapolis, that's good. Construction in New York, is that really what they do? They might be a construction company that develops in New York, but construction in New York could be, you know, what are the construction plans? What is the cost of construction? It could be all over the place. Uh, contractors, New York, New York. Contractors, New York, New York. I, um, that could mean anything. Uh, Chicago construction companies list. Uh, okay, but I'm looking for a list. I'm not looking for a specific. So maybe I'll get distracted. Maybe I'll click on it. Maybe I'll end up at that page and feel really good and call Turner. The point is that you're going to end up in the search engines in positions 1 through 100 without any work. It's just going to happen. And you may get position 1. It may just happen, right? But let's not focus our energy and effort on making those words come up in position one through three or on page one or in the maps because it doesn't make any sense to put that kind of effort into it. And it takes effort, especially if you have to have a page dedicated to that content. Now, Turner Construction is a large company. They have plenty of content. Hence the reason they've got all these position ones. They've got lots of blog articles. You may not be in that position. And even if you are in that position, don't you want to make sure that you are looking at the best and you're getting the best quality that you can get and focusing on less but going deep versus, you know, an inch, an inch deep and a mile wide. I'm sure you've heard that before. Getting very focused on your intent, your final selection. Um, this is a well-defined list. Oh, this is Turner Construction. So we've got these mixed up. This is a well-defined list. So now I'm going to go to the mishmash. So let's flip those. The mishmash is sweet tomatoes, Walmart, etc. So those, although not in number one positions, there's high search volume, but they're also working on them in some way. So whether you have a more well-defined list, construction companies in Houston, you're still going to have some of that mishmash as it's listed. Same thing with the final selection is you're going to end up here. So if there's, like, if there's an e-commerce person on the line today, they're going to end up with thousands of keywords being found at all different types of positions. And so what they want to do is look at what is the best selling, what are the best selling items at the highest margin and start focusing there. Same thing if you have limited content, you really have to think about what you're selling. Let's suppose you are... I don't know, you sell Botox and fillers and things like that, but you also sell liposuction. Well, liposuction is a much higher dollar value, so you may want to focus on that versus Botox and fillers and so on because you may not get as much money. So you do want to focus on the high volume, I mean the high value as well when you decide to change up your content. So it's not just about volume. Relevancy is about your customer, what they're looking for taking time to research so your list of keywords is solid and it offers a measurable ROI and new customers. And so our offer today is we will do, and Bright Edge is the platform that we use. It's got two aspects of it that are patented that are really cool. It's called Share a Voice, which tells us 
what you dominate within your keyword segment. So you might have 1% of the market, and it's only for national companies. Share of voice is only for national. We can do share of voice against your competitors, which is pretty cool. So you can see of the keywords that you're optimized for, how many are they optimized for, and what do they own as part of that real estate, if you will. Give you your blended rank, the volume, the page rank, um, and then a 30-minute consultation. So it's a very cool um, program or report that you'll get that will give you insight and intel for 2016 or if you're really scrambling by the end of the year. We'd love your questions. Please contact us. And if you'd like to go with the blended uh, rank, keyword volume, page rank, competitive intelligence, share a voice, and the consultation, please get in touch. Have a great day, everyone.